Hey guys, I'm Perry Nemroth, and welcome back to another episode of Collider Best of the Week, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the videos that go up on the Collider Videos YouTube channel or to read all the articles that go up on Collider.com and you want to check out some of the best of the best right in one spot. First up on today's lineup, of course, is Movie Talk. We had so many trailers drop this week. It was impossible to pick just one to cover, but I'm going with the new Transformers trailer. So let's check out what the Movie Talk panel thought about the first trailer for Transformers The Last Night. There has never been a Transformers trailer, even though I hated number two, and I hated number three, and I hated number four. Despite all of that, there has never been a Transformers trailer that I did not absolutely love. It happened last night. For the first time, it happened last night. Um, what can I say? I thought it was a snooze fest of a trailer. I really, I, I thought it was a completely boring trailer with like completely random shots that weren't revealing anything rather cool. You have Anthony Hopkins just coming off of an incredible spin on Westworld. He's Odin, he's got that voice. Everything he's saying, I'm trying to feel the gravitas, but it's just not there. And it's not accompanied by images. It's just random images of some knights with some flaming arrows and there's a Nazi swastika. Oh, so we've heard, yeah, there's Nazis in there. Merlin's gonna show up, all these things we've heard about. And then all the shots of the robots, nothing was interesting to me at least. The pacing of the, the beginning is just like, all right, very slow things happening, all right, slow crawl happening. And then, Metal, 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 metal. And none of it blended together to make actually a cohesive trailer. I was actually intrigued with the Unicron thing. I believe that is supposed to be Unicron, so I find that interesting. I don't know if Optimus Prime is floating in space and then he becomes the new Galvatron or something like that because Unicron finds him. I have no idea what they're going for it. Um, but uh, fool me once, uh, shame on you. Fool me five times, shame on me. So <laughs> I I'm going to be like, yeah, it's going to be garbage. But the review will be fun. We're gonna stick with trailers, but move on over to Heroes, where the panel is talking about the brand new trailer for FX's Legion, starring Dan Stevens. I watched this trailer and I was like, yo, is this set in like the late 70s or early 80s? Did you notice like using a payphone, all the clothing is like 70s, early 80s. Everything about the clothing and the, the sets and it just screams it is not now. It is not made of this time period. So for myself, I think they might be pulling a fast one in a really cool way where they're saying, this is Professor X's son and it takes place in the, you know, probably the early eighties, maybe even the same time period as Age of Apocalypse. What do you think? Well, uh, look, clearly there's anachronistic stuff happening in the trailer and I was intrigued by that. But again, is this a dream? Is he in his own head? You know, how are they going to play this? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it, if it is in the past, it opens up an interesting, like you just said, if you're whatever, in terms of the continuity, are they going to match up right. with the continuity or, or, or even acknowledge that there's the X-Men movies? Right. But if so, if you're looking at a time period that's between, say, Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, I mean, that could be really, really interesting. I, I, again, I don't know. Well, remember, I mean, X2 had Legion in it. Right, Professor X's son was a, but he quite was, a villain, yeah. But he was young. Yes. So it's, uh, but then again, you're trying, if we have to start trying to make sense of the no, X-Men No, I know, X-Men continuity is, uh, is, is, is its own entirely unique, strange, individualistic, and th by that I mean each movie is its own timeline. Over on Jedi Council, we are talking Snoke. And no, it's not a who is Snoke discussion. There's a rumor surfacing that claims that Snoke in episode eight is going to be brought to life with a bunch of people operating a seven or eight foot puppet. What does the council think about that? Let's check it out. I've been screaming for this, and it'll be a mixture. I think it's going to be a little bit of on-car plot type stuff. There'll be, uh, it'll be very similar to, you know, you'll see some performance capture, but mixed in with the puppet. And I think it's great. I think it's reminiscent of Empire Strikes Back with, with Yoda, and it's kind of anti-Yoda. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I also think that I would rather see Andy Serkis doing what Simon Pegg did for this particular thing, because I think that it's going to look a little the different with Apes is that with apes, there's just so many performance capture apes that it just blends in. I just feel that it'd be a little too jarring. Snoke was a little jarring to me the way he looked, but I'll, but I'll give it a pass because it was a holocron. I really do think that no matter how good visual effects are, and there's incredible visual effects, I don't want to knock that at all because Star Wars film franchise has excellent visual effects across the board, but there is something about 
like an actual creature being there that really does make all the difference. And I'm just curious to know if this is something that was planned beforehand or if, you know, some sort of reaction to Snoke from The Force Awakens. They're like, you know what? Maybe we should rethink what we're doing with this guy. Because, yeah. like, I know a lot of people were talking about how Snoke maybe, you know, it was a projection, but maybe Snoke was, was human height when we actually met him. So now I'm curious that he, he's actually a seven, eight foot tall character. Yeah, I mean, he sounds like he's right around Yao Ming height, which would make sense for him being this imposing user of the force somehow. I like this call because if you look at another set of movies that utilizes puppets heavily interacting with real human beings and does have a lot of special effects, that would be the Muppet movies. The Muppet movies are great because now when you see the new Muppet movies, you see the puppets, but they take away all like the, the sticks and stuff, so you don't, see, you don't have to have that take you out of the movie i think that's probably the same kind of stuff they'll employ with using this puppet is that there's a lot of strings and and workings that are going on but you can digitally remove all that stuff so this week was also a universal monster cinematic universe heavy week we got the mummy trailer and that behind the scenes featurette but there were also a bunch of quotes that surfaced from alex kurtzman and this one that we're going to focus on right now is him saying that dracula untold is not canon Let's check out a little bit of the discussion that we had on Collider Nightmares this week. I watched Girl on the Train the other night. I didn't know Luke Evans was in it. Mm. He is in it. That is a universal movie. He, he's got Fast and the Furious. He's got uh, with Universal. He's got Girl on the Train with Universal and, and Dracula Untold with Universal. There's something Universal likes Luke Evans. Yeah. And I know what they're saying here, but there's something inside of me that's like, I don't know if this is the last we've seen of Luke Evans. Am I crazy? I've never it's a seen fantastic actor. I've I never like seen a movie with Luke Evans where I thought, oh, Luke Evans is bad in that. No. If, anyth no, yeah. if anything, the movie wasn't to his level. So I think he does deserve a shot at maybe playing Dracula again. But I am betting against it, especially given when you've got, you know, Luke Evans is a big name right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Tom Cruise, right, Russell Crowe. Johnny Depp. These are all Oscar, Bardem. No Oscar winners or nominees. Yeah. These are They're, heavy yeah. hitters. They're yeah. going to add someone to that pile of that star power level. So who's it going to be? How about Tom Hiddleston? So, well, someone Tom Hiddleston as Dracula? <laughs> yeah, well, why not? no. That, actually, this awesome. is where, this is where awesome. it came up. It came up on, uh, now I'm remembering, on Friday Movie Talk, it came up in a Twitter question, and I said I wanted Luke Evans back, and then someone tweeted me after the show, and they're like, well, what about Tom Hiddleston? Yeah, absolutely. You know what? I I kind of like. I think we listen, vote. Uh, can we vote for Tom Hiddleston? Listen, yeah. Tom, <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom Hiddleston can you know drink my blood all day long. I <laughs> I'm on board with that, but I don't. The, the darkness that well then again he's okay. got that Loki he's flavor. got the Loki flavor man Loki is yeah. not scary he he is, but he he has that ability to go dark well, I, mean, I, I saw at, him in High Rise and, and oh, Only yeah. Lovers Only Left Lovers Alive, left alive. Oh, oh yeah that's right where, yeah. But fantastic Only Lovers Left Alive he was a little uh, emo. Yeah, but that movie is amazing. <laughs> I, I have I, never I, seen I Only Lovers Left Alive. Get on that film. Yeah. I don't, hate do Only not, Lovers Do not listen Alive. to Clark Wolf. We have a battle going on. Yeah. I think that's one of the greatest vampire movies ever made. And Bam. I so Rogue One doesn't hit theaters for another week, but we're going to start sharing some of our interviews from the Lucasfilm event right now. Steve was lucky enough to attend that event. He got to talk to Gareth Edwards and everyone in the cast. Right now, we're going to show you a clip from his interview with Gareth Edwards, during which Edwards talks about how much they shot while making the movie and why they can't include all of it. We shot the film, uh, at least some of it, like quite like a documentary. Like we're embedded filmmakers in like a war zone and stuff. And so we ended up with hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and days of material. And so the real trick was just getting all that down and being able to sit and watch it and go through it really, you know, with a fine tooth comb. And uh, I mean, there's always an assembly, which is always too long. Sure. And then in the edit, you just get it down. But I think by the summer, we had it down to the release time. And then it was, it becomes a game of Jenga, like, I'll take this out, I'll put this in, like, try and keep it all still working. And and so it well, was... It the was reason good. I bring this up is Star Wars fans love seeing anything that was cut from the movie. So I guess what I'm saying is, is there like 10 or 20 minutes of deleted stuff that could make it uh, eventually that fans will see it? I think you'd have to ask uh, people like Kathy that, but I think, we had a conversation yesterday about um, the graphic novel uh, that's going to accompany the film 
And that was a great opportunity to put all these layers in that we either didn't film or we talked about, but you know, we're not within the logistics. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. And now let's check out a clip from Steve's interview with Jen Erso herself, Felicity Jones. I saw about 30 minutes of the movie last night and it was fantastic. Um, it looks so good and so different than any other Star Wars movie because it looks like a war movie. Um, can you sort of talk about that aspect of Rogue One? Yeah, it is. It's so exciting when you're watching it. We watched uh, the movie two nights ago. It was screened for us at Skywalker Ranch, and we watched it the whole, all the rebels together. <laughs> oh, and uh, and Krennic, um, but we let him in just for that night, you know. But um, but it is. It's it's very much true to the references that we looked at early on in the film. You know, Saving Private Ryan and. Um, Apocalypse Now, um, it has a real kind of um, authenticity and uh, it very much feels like you're in the action. You're, you kind of, as the audience, you definitely are with them. You go on that, that journey as well. I hope you like Netflix content because there's a lot of it coming our way in the new year. Netflix announced that there is just so much new content that they plan to release in 2017. So the TV Talk panel discussed that, and they also talked a little bit about the new download option that Netflix is offering. <laughs> well, remember when I first got Netflix and I was going on a flight and I was like, fleet, I'm going to download some movies. And I thought that I just wasn't tech savvy. I was like, it's not working. <laughs> the button doesn't work. The fact that this is now like, hi, welcome to the 21st century. And we could actually do this now. I'm yeah. very excited yes. about that. Yes. In terms of them flooding us with more content, I'm also super excited mm. about that. For me with Netflix is that there is there's so much and it's so great. Mm. It's a buffet. Yeah. Right. It's like Las Vegas is, you know, we're on the show and we do watch a ton of television, but we can't watch everything. There's no possible way we can watch everything. So if we all have our, our certain niche or our corner of the market uh, to watch on Netflix, there's something for everybody. I was I finally got my parents on Netflix. They didn't really understand. They didn't have the, the app or whatever. And now they are hooked on everything. And it's it really is Netflix kind of I mean, really, when you think about it, started a revolution. They, did. they really did. They started a binge revolution, a, a, a term that was really... It was House of Cards. It, yeah. It, and it, binge before was sort of a, a weird word that mostly was associated with like binge eating or something of a bad nature. And now this binge watching thing, it wasn't even in the lexicon 10 years ago. So yeah, not even just the binge, but creating great content outside yeah. of the usual cable bundles that you have to buy. Yeah. So that's why there's so many corkers. That's why I said DirecTV just launched their DirecTV Now thing that you can pay 30 to $50 a month for would not have a subscription, not have a satellite hooked yeah. up to your roof because people are tired of paying $150 a month for cable. Now it's time to move on over to the Collider.com portion of the show and we get to talk about some of the written features done by the team over there. We've got two must-read articles for Westworld fans. The show wrapped up its first season last weekend, so this first spoiler-packed piece from Haley Fouch covers nine burning questions she wants answered in the second season. This next one from Allison Keene is all about the Westworld maze. What exactly is it? What does it mean? Did the folks behind the show execute the mystery of the maze well? Check out the article on Collider.com for Allison's thoughts. We have so much Transformers The Last Night content to share thanks to Steve's set visit. Right now, you're looking at his Things to Know piece, which is an excellent summary of all the key details he learned. But there's also breakout articles on Grimlock and the Dinobots, an R-rated Bumblebee movie idea, and more. And now I love this Collider.com staff piece. It's the 29 most rewatchable movies ever made. First off, it is just a great, great list of movies, but second, it's interesting to read about what exactly makes them rewatchable. We're a week into December, so you better be thinking about holiday gifts, and if you need a little help planning your shopping list, Emma Fraser put together a great list of gift ideas for the TV fans in your life. There's a lot of great options here, but if anyone out there is getting me a holiday gift, Stranger Things Funko Pops, please. So now we've arrived at the Schmodown portion of the show. No team match this week. It is two singles. And first up, we're going to highlight a little bit of Ashley Robinson facing off against Mike Kalinowski. I don't know much about Mike Kalinowski, but in the country that I'm from, we don't have corporal punishment, so I'm a little terrified by the nickname. I know he's a DC movie guy, but Jason Inman is a close personal friend of mine, and I'm hoping that gives me the edge today. Matching up against Ashley the Robin Robinson. Now this is kind of, since it's my first match, I don't want to come off too strong. I got to play the field, see how she does. She's got that geek history lesson that she does. She's steeped in the geek knowledge. So I think she's going to be a tough competitor. She knows her stuff. 
give it up for Mike the Killer Kalinowski. Look at Kalinowski. Please welcome Ashley the Robin Robinson. Oh my gosh, intimidating. She's got a weapon with the Canadian flag. Look at that weapon. Wow, she's got, oh. Category action adventure. Who played the leader, Hannibal Smith, in the 2010 film version of The A-Team? That would be Liam Neeson. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> Big star for Mike Kalinowski. Which 2005 film features historical characters including Senator Joseph McCarthy, CBS TV journalist Edward R. Murrow, and TV producer Fred Friendly? Good night and good luck. That's correct. Oh, yeah. there you go. And now it's time to check out a preview of the match. I have a feeling you've been waiting for. It is Chris Stuckman going up against Jeff Snyder. Let's roll it. Big match for me, okay? For weeks, I've been hearing from Chris Stuckman's 100 million, billion, zillion YouTube fans. Let me tell you something. All it takes is a one enemy. And today, that's going to be me. Jeff Snyder as a competitor in the Schmodown. I respect him. I've watched all three of his matches. I've studied his techniques. I know his ins and outs. I know his weaknesses. I know his strengths. Ladies and gentlemen, the number six ranked contender, Jeff the Insnider Snyder! The Stockmanizer, Chris Stockman! Classy. Yeah, look at that. Oh, just turning. Who played the mysterious manager of the Dolphin Hotel in the film 1408? Samuel L. Jackson. That is correct. There you go. One point for Snyder. Which horror remake was the first feature directed by Zack Snyder? Dawn of the Dead. That's correct. That's correct. All right, Stuckman on the board. And now it's time for Meme of the Week, the portion of the show when I get to show off some of the really cool memes and pieces of artwork made by you fine viewers out there. This week we have two winners. First up is a certain someone named Cobster who just couldn't help himself. And in honor of the brand new Spider-Man Homecoming trailer, he photoshopped Cody's head onto Spider-Man. And obviously that fits really well. And then we can't let Cobster have all the fun. So this week's second winner comes from Facebook and it comes from someone named Jonathan Carroll who shared this gem of a certain someone he calls Cobster Claws. Do you want your meme or artwork featured right here on Best of the Week? It's super easy to do. All you have to do is pick a moment from one of our shows, make a meme or a piece of art, and then send it on over to mailbag at collider.com or you can tweet it at us using the hashtag Collider Best of the Week. All right, guys, it is that time of the show, your favorite time, bloopers. Flashy intro. We're, we've got a trickle in crew, so some crews trickling in, but we're starting the show right now. Also, here is David Griffin. Oh, I'm sorry, Sasha Paul Raver. <laughs> Wait, why apologize for that? Go, it's David! Tomorrow night, John, Perry, myself, Christian, Ellis, and a few other people. Uh, me. Uh, Wendy and... Uh, <laughs> Tiffany, Tiff, Tiff's Tiffany, coming with us. We're all going to the Rogue One premiere. Stop and making sad faces, Have a Roka. good time, guys. Yeah. Have a great time. Hey. But they gave me an extra plus one. However, it said no scarves. What? Uh, <laughs> I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> invite Roka. So, so you, this probably goes without saying. They're opening the door. You're not even having your peanut butter with it. <laughs> we're off to a great start. Someone just joined. Amy, what's going on? We had to start the show because we, we got a, a tight schedule, but Hi. we're talking about Legion. You get a chance to see that trailer? That was the thing I was going to do before I snuck on stream, but you gestured at me. Dang it, I really want to oh. watch this. I'm so sorry, guys. There was a show called Scrotal Recall, and I was like, I'm not watching that. Yeah. It's actually really funny. You wouldn't oh. know that with the name Scrotal Recall. How about Love Scrotal? Nope, nah, that's Scrotal right. Love. Scrotal Love. I wouldn't be Star Wars without the rumor mill launching into cyberspace. <laughs> cyberspace. And during his visit, producer Dylan Clark. <laughs> it, it, oh, wait, what? 
Steve, right? Take a lighter crew. Who do you think will be the Steve. breakout star? <laughs> is this the Steve? The Steve? If not, you're still cool because your name is Steve. Steve and Stu. <laughs> Though not easy to find, they're located all over the Star Wars galaxy. Most notably in the Crystal Click. They're located all over the Star Wars galaxy. No. The idea came from early Jaffs of, uh, mm, Jaff. Sorry, guys. My tongue is sticky today. Say it with me, Johns. Mortal Kombat! And I somehow ended up on the back of a horse, and a bear ate me because I couldn't figure out how to draw my weapon and shoot. So I literally was eaten by a bear on top of a horse. I hope someone watches Nightmares and starts right at that point. I have a song. Of no. Scrotum. It is a tiny piece of skin. No, no, Scrotum. no, 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 oh, no, 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 Sasha, that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> why don't you run songs before? That's for Collider TV yeah, after a, dark. You know, which moves have we come out? And we have dogs running in, and we have <laughs> dogs, you, you can't <laughs> see it. We love There's two of the same It's There's a dog and a vision. Stop, there we go. There's danger. But Isn't it nice that Jeremy's dogs and I go to the same barber? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? I see a chat room. What's up? We're going to stick with the Universal Mummies for a minute. Because, or mummies. The Universal <laughs> Mummies. <laughs> the Universal Monster Sounds movies. like a delicious cereal. Yeah. I'm, I'm eating like, mummies. I love my Universal Mummies. Mm -hmm. I know you guys went last year. I'm looking forward to this It's going to be a lot of fun. Also here. <laughs> yeah, you know. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I don't want to say, but it would be very fucking dick. <laughs> what are you getting in that? <laughs> dark hole. <laughs> dark hole, duh. Not dark hole. Um, Sasha is eight. Dude, You're an eight turning seven. <laughs> You're not even going towards nine. Pew. Pew. Hi. <laughs> you and that milk box. <laughs> I don't like my milk box. <laughs> it's adorable. It's honestly adorable. <laughs> like Ceylon I, milk tea box. I find it really, really cute. Like sucking on his like juice box <laughs> is what it looks like. But that sucking sound. <laughs> like, <I'm> <laughs> but it wasn't until the 2012 Clone Wars animated series, The Gap Animated, and other planets not found on the Star Wars. Star Fuck, that's the joke, Ken. That's the joke, you get the joke. The science behind this is that the crystal focuses energy. That's it, sorry. Hey Mark, you got a movie you'd like to uh, nominate? Stay with me, John. Mortal Kombat! All right, break it up, guys. In your apartment with yes. sunlight and like be eating some cereal. Yeah, you're eating yeah. the bowl of the mummies. So, yeah, you should <laughs> eat your mummies. Like, no, 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 it's not too frightening. What do you think, morning squirrel? <laughs> Little squirrels right there. Yeah, it sounds scary. Because you know I wake up every morning with my little bird and morning squirrel. That's right. And I go, what do you think? Back to you, Ashley. <laughs> Fuck, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. What do I think about George Lucas' comments? Oh, yeah, fucking shit. The Lego group. Make it the, shoot. Yeah, the Lego shoot shoot Star thing. Wars Millennium Falcon oh, set was provided it, to it us shoots, by the Lego uh, group. It shoots little pieces Guys, the hold on a second. <laughs> Schnapp. You guys all suck. <laughs> <laughs> Screw this movie. I don't like sand. Good job, guys. Yeah. Feel yeah. very yeah. good about what we've done here so far. You just when you thought we couldn't hit an all-time low, we hit an all-time low. Oh, geez, Great work, song. Sasha Pearl Raver. That is a wrap on this weekend's episode of Collider Best of the Week. You guys know what I like you to do. Please hit the comment section below and share some of your favorite moments from this week's lineup of shows. I am Perry Nemroff. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at P Nemroff. Please go on over and bookmark Collider.com. Subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel. Watch and read everything, but just in case you don't have time, that's what Best of the Week is for. Have a great weekend, everyone. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.